What a delightful hodgepodge of Republican, Democratic, idiotic politics we have today, and we finally, f well, we finally got the replacement. Um, not so much a aesthetic improvement off of Liz Cheney, like uh, you guys went up from a three to a four, maybe. Like, eh, I don't know. We're going to have to see where she goes. And uh, if one of her first takes is being the House Committee Chair for the GOP in the House, uh, I'm not optimistic. I Like I said, when we went over most of her policies, most of her background, she is a stalking rhino if I have ever seen one. Who knows? She has kind of made an about face lately-ish, a big old face, a round one at that, and uh, has been voting and has been seeming like she's definitely hopping on the proper direction for the GOP. Not my opinion, that's just the direction that they're going. Let's see what we had here today. So House Republicans on Friday elevated Representative Elise Stefanik from New York, and keep that in mind because we're going to be going to New York very, very shortly, to one of their caucus's most powerful positions. Oh, she's a part of the most powerful cock. Us. Uh, two days after they ousted Representative Liz Cheney, Wyoming, from the same post, thank you for your service. Now you can go off and be with your other porkish kind. The House GOP voted Stefanik, 36 years old. God, those are a rough old 36 years, aren't they? Yeesh. As House Republican Conference Chair over Challenger Chip Roy from Texas. Ugh. God, really had a fucking killer's row of candidates now, didn't you? The vote, which took place behind closed doors, was on 134 to 46. Uh, the amazing power of, even within interparty politics, what a Trump endorsement can do. Taking somebody who was of little to no substance to absolutely catapulting her career and making her the third ranking Republican in the House of Representatives, which are on the cusp of becoming the majority party in 2022. Hmm. I want to con con blah, sorry, congratulate Stefanik and welcome her to a leadership team. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, uh, that uh, right-wing extremist Kevin McCarthy <coughs> from California. Uh, it's so nice when New York and California can link hands after they're giving you an airtight from across the country. There's nothing sus about this whatsoever besides the proper species of the outgoing Liz Cheney. Roy, a member of the House Freedom Caucus, launched a last-second bid on Thursday with supporters arguing that he would better represent Republicans. Eh, yeah, kind of, sort of. The name rings a bell. Uh, he's decent, but... Th fucking just a average ass candidate really i know jim jordan has a high ranking position and steve scalise is the number two but we'll be seeing if uh stefanik is uh what side is she playing for is she the mccarthy side or is she on the scalise jordan side i think we kind of have a little bit of a tip off to begin with and let's get into those comments because the rest of this is just really fucking boring stuff like Liz Cheney is a pig and um, people are happy she's there. But she has a very prescient point that she's making with the, one of her first statements. Uh, Trump voters are critical to Republicans winning in 2022. You fucking dolt. That's the only reason you're there. Trump endorsements, Trump supporters. You are from upstate New York. You are from a very freedom-centric part of the state of New York. They do exist, okay? It's just like Illinois. It is just like Portland, just like Washington. Red state, blue cities. It just so happens that New York City, if you haven't heard, is a little bit fucking populated. Densely, in fact. That's why they have so many congressional seats. You, my oval-headed friend, need to understand that that is your voting base. That is the direction of the GOP. How many fucking times do you have to scream this from the goddamn rafters that the Trump voter is the direction of the GOP. It's not, we need to win back Trump supporters. You never lost them. You never lost them. Rhetoric like this will definitely lose them, considering them the others that we have to bring back into our party somehow. Fucking dunce. Stefanik, who was endorsed by some Republicans to take the number three House Republican spot, said that she views people who voted for Donald Trump as crucial to the GOP retaking the House majority in 2022. You fucking clown. In an interview over the weekend, Stefanix, who has been endorsed by Trump and House Minority Whip Steve Scalise, told Breitbart News about her about what she would do differently if she were to replace Liz Cheney, which uh, she is now. Number one, I would listen to the voters across the country, which I do every day from my district. When was the last time you were in your district and not in Washington, D.C.? Just asking, just asking. 
which voted overwhelmingly for President Trump. Exactly a fucking t oh. Congresswoman said that the role of the conference House chair is to serve as a unifier of sorts who can speak on behalf of the majority of House Republican lawmakers. I would also spend time listening. I don't care what you're going to be doing. Just fucking do it and don't announce what you're going to be doing, okay? But here's what this broad promises to do. And trust me, I'd be making this exact same cry if we had a similar voting stalking rhino filling this exact same chair it's a big chair to begin with but she's going to be doing a adequate job at doing so so yeah she's going to listen to members of the conference making sure that representing a majority of the republicans conference views and when you're not able to do anymore you should step down from those leadership positions you should realize that it's not an opportunity for you to share your personal views whatever they may be and speak for the team Depends on which team you're on, because we know that there's two within the Republican Party, uh, one that's on Trump's side, the one that's on the winning side for the Republican Party at large, and then there's the other side that just wants to self-sustain themselves. They just, they're highly successful, mind you. They aren't quite the majority. They aren't even near the majority, but they do have the most political influence. See Mitch McConnell being able to stick around forever. John Cornyn. Tom Thune. Which is just a fun name to say. Lindsey Graham, who just kind of shapes or he takes on whatever shape of the container you pour him into. The guy has no backbone, but the guy perfectly emboldens the type of representative we are seeing so far. Granted, she hasn't done very much of Stefanik. I'll be keeping my eye on you, lady. I'll be keeping my eye on you. Like I said, we're going to New York. Okay, and the number one front runner. Okay, the guy who is more than likely going to end up being the New York mayor in 2022 is the one, the only, the leader of the Yang gang, Andrew Yang himself. And um, the guy has forever just had terrible takes. Okay, I didn't buy that whole Yang gang thing in 2020 because I'm not fucking 14 years old. Universal basic income is such a good idea. It allows people to shut up, shut up. It does nothing just incentivizes laziness. No, he had a hot take or 12 because he understands the demographics of New York City. And uh, if you want a clear picture of that or why he would send out a pro-Israel tweet after they were bombed by Palestine, um, we'll just ask the opinion of Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson what they think of New York City. It's not pretty, but it's accurate. And because all of those guys are Democrats, and that's what the banner Andrew Yang is running under, therefore he's just going to coast into the fucking mayoral chamber, he has to reconcile the demographics of New York City to that of the predilection to favor Hamas and Hezbollah and rather the terroristic states in the Middle East. So this makes sense. This makes sense, okay? And maybe because he also backtracked on a pro-Israel tweet is because um, him, as a Asian-American man, uh, probably fears the specific wing of um, Israelites that are uh, devout followers of Farrakhan and uh, he doesn't want to become another statistic. <laughs> Stop Asian hate. <laughs> New York City mayoral candidate and former Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang backtracked Wednesday after he tweeted earlier in the week it to support Israel as it continues to be bombarded by rockets fired by Palestinian terrorists. It's getting fucking weird over there, but I need to keep gathering more information because I don't want to... <sighs> It's weird, right? I got a gut feeling, but I don't necessarily know enough about the entire situation. It's, I, I know, generations gone on, but uh, my gut says go pro-Israel, but I just don't know the history on the other side. So forgive my lack of coverage of this one. I just don't want to wander needlessly into the fog. I just have to continue to read and form an opinion based on that. But that's what I'm thinking. That's where I'm going. But um of course, I uh, reserve my right to be wrong on this one, even though um, when you're constantly being on the defense, on the back foot, uh, I think that um, the aggressors in the area and their ties kind of lead you down one path. And that's, I guess, what Andrew Yang was kind of thinking here, but then he got the word from DNC that, um, oh, no, 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 uh, you're pro-Palestine, pal. Breitbart News reported earlier this week, Yang took a traditionally pro-Israel and anti-terror view as the aspirant mayor of a city with a large, deeply rooted, oh my god, shut it down, shut it down, community, and direct painful experience with radical Islamic terrorist attacks. Yes, the truck of peace, my friend. I'm standing with the people of Israel who are coming under bombardment attacks and condemn the Hamas terrorists. The people of New York City will always stand with our brothers and sisters in Israel who face down terrorism and persevere, he tweeted Monday. Nice, nice statement. I could see where they're taking offense with that, but um, yeah, 
all you need to do if you're looking for local terrorism against the local Jewish community is, uh, yeah, just pan some closed circuit uh, security feeds. Oof. But progressive Democrats attacking Yang, calling him a white supremacist because that right there is obviously the face of white supremacy. Oh, he is a Democrat, though. That makes sense. And urging New Yorkers to oppose him. Representative, oh my God, the fucking hot take machine, Alexandria Ocasio-Chavez, even encouraged Muslims not to host him at a communal religious celebrations. Yeah, I wouldn't want him to get beat up or anything. That'd be all right. On Wednesday, in the face of uh, criticism from anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian activities in his own party, Yang backed down, and his statement was, Support of a people does not make one blind to the pain and suffering of others. Oh, somebody got to him, and uh, they did some good old bamboo chips under the fingernails type torture. Probably just brought him back to his childhood. Yang wrote, Again, most people... Oh, most everyone simply wants to be able to live and pray in peace. Yeah, that's definitely all it was about. It wasn't about... Um, uh, what are the one of the tenets of Hamas? Isn't it something like eradicating all the Jews around the world? Something like that. I don't know. It seems to ring a bell. But yeah, um, there you go. That's going to be the new mayor of New York City. And I'm sure he will probably further its descent into irrelevancy and continue to be a cancerous cyst on the nation. Thanks, Cuomo. Thanks, Yang. Thanks, de Blasio. Did you guys see that one? Uh, de Blasio was holding a press conference while eating a fucking Shake Shack burger. I don't know. I don't care either. He's on his way out. He can, I don't know, siphon off some more taxpayer funds. See if his wife needs some more staffers for her cooking videos online. But this one's a, a, a little bit funny. Um, not something I would have expected the New York Times to be writing quite yet unless we're setting our setting ourselves up for an incoming president harris uh, i'd imagine this one was probably just kind of stashed away nice and quietly but uh yeah it made landfall and it's interesting and like i said it's not not surprising to anybody biden has short temper outbursts of profanity yeah uh, I could bring up that video, but uh, there was the one where uh, on the campaign trail, he was at a manufacturing facility. I do believe it was in Pennsylvania. And there was the one union worker who came up to him and asked him about his uh, very anti Second Amendment stance, asked him a couple of questions. And Joe Biden, with a glassy eyed look around after he was uh, done being grilled by the union worker, and he's like, Ah, you're full of shit. Uh, out of absolutely nowhere. It was a rather benign question. It was just rapidly presented to Joe, and it probably just overwhelmed him and that is one of the signs of dementia if you didn't know rapid outbursts of emotion so like i said uh not something that was unexpected but the timing of it uh, just kind of makes me perk a little bit of an ear out there president joe biden has a short temper and sometimes unloads outbursts of profanity on his aides the new york times reported friday oh and another thing you remember Oh, God, just when he was first taken office and he was condemning Trump for being such a bad man to live literally everybody just regurgitating all of the old orange man bad talking points. And if he found out that uh, if anybody under his command, if they were going to be mean to anybody, there'd be a zero tolerance policy in this White House. Uh, maybe the zero tolerance policy is uh, leaking what's going on behind the scenes. But again, this is the New York Times and it is just a fucking anonymous source. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But he does have a history of this. He does have quite an extensive track record. At least he's keeping his clothes on in this report. The report notes Biden holds lengthy deliberation meetings and demands obsessive detail. OK, I already know this is bullshit because the only thing lengthy that he does is take a shit in the morning. When advisors get too technical or obscure about an issue, Biden responds with an outburst of frustration, often laced with profanity. My kind of guy. On policy issues, Mr. Biden, seven, fucking 78 years old. He's the president. He is the most powerful man in the free world. Or whoever's, I don't know, guiding him that direction. Takes days or weeks to make up his mind as he examines a second guesses himself and others. Oh, I so desperately want to believe this. But again, it's from the New York Times and it's only just a single source Fuck! Can't always be a winner. But we'll see what they're reporting. We'll see what they're reporting. The report also reveals Biden will hang up the phone on people who he feels are wasting his time. 
There's a lot of evidence that this could be true. President leaves heavily on his inner circle for governing. Chief of Staff Ron Klain, Def Deputy Chief of Staff uh, Bruce Reed, Senior Advisor Mike Donilon, and Counselor to the President Steve Reschetti. Yeah, guys, he has extensive history for... And um, yeah, that's probably what a smart individual should do, surround themselves with like-minded, good individuals. Something that Trump did a lot, and something that he didn't necessarily put the right people in place, but uh, Biden has literally been on the government tit from the time that he turned 18. Oh yeah, but he had a brief time being a defense attorney. More time was spent by Bill Clinton on the Lolita Express. Then Biden worked in the public sector, or private sector rather. Biden stalls and deliberates intensely on issues such as his tone towards Vladimir Putin. Uh, see, you know, all of that um, Russian propaganda. Yeah, you know, it's something like, uh, what, do, what do the cool kids call it? Projection. Projection, right. Uh, the report noted appointing ambassadors and a recent flip-flop on refugee caps. Yeah, uh, we're going to have uh, 15,000. Yeah, that's a cool number. What did I say before? 40. Go fuck yourself. We're gonna have 15, man. Oh, 40? Oh, fuck. Fuck. F let them all in. Give them citizenship, too. Tell them to vote Democrat. Get off my fucking case, man. Something like that. Other details in the Times story include Biden's love of pasta and red sauce. Uh, vanilla chocolate chip. I Ew. His drink of choice, orange Gatorade, yes, to get him electrolytes so he doesn't fucking fall face first into the podium whenever he's done giving a speech. Like I said, I can believe it. The history is there. Even if you look back to his old vice presidential meetings, uh, phone calls that he'd have towards the end of his administration in about oh, 2016 with a certain Ukrainian prosecutor's office. I don't know. It rings a bell, right? Uh, just don't look in a certain son's laptop. Something tells me that there are a lot of people behind the scenes making this story available. It's the same type of people who would have went uh, behind Andrew Yang's back, tapped him on the shoulder and said, yeah, you're going to be retracting that statement. And then immediately just fucking Thanos snapped that original statement out of existence are the same people who are leaking this. I think, oh, I don't want to put any money on it, but uh, I think we're in for a 47th president by the end of the year because if stories like this are going to start making the rounds, they're setting up for something. They're getting us all ready. Uh, there's a reason why Joe Biden hasn't held another press conference because uh, every time that he answers a couple of questions from the press, it's always, always, always prefaced with, I'm going to get in trouble if I answer this, man. So uh, just keep your eyes open. I know I will. I know Joe can't. So somebody's got to for him, I suppose. And now we're going to go take a look at Arizona because guess what? The audit's all wrapped up and guess what? Holy fuck, what a disaster, right, guys? Anyways, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.